So we are the SAR team. Uh, SAR stands for Search and Rescue, and what we're doing right now is just some training to simulate what would happen and what we would do if someone fell down on a crevasse. So we're going to abseil down to someone, do some basic first aid, um, then drew Mart back to the top using some ascenders, and then we will make a little pulley system and pull them out. Um, what is really clear when you're down here is that there are no emergency services. There's no one to come and help you. Um, so you have to be your own emergency services. Everyone has two jobs. They have their normal day job and then they have an emergency role. And some people have first aid training. Some people like us are search and rescue. Others have breathing apparatus training, which is um, if there's a fire and the room is smoky, they can go into the smoky room, locate a casualty, pull them out. And all this is to be as safe as we can. So we do a lot of rigorous drills and testing to make sure that basically we are all up to date with our training and remember what to do in a emergency situation. <laughs> this right here is the Brunt Ice Shelf. This is where Halley is situated in Antarctica. Halley is around here, um, well the old Halley was around there and the new Halley is around somewhere over here. So what you see here is um, this line here represents the hinge zone. So all this bit here is ice, everything on this side is ice and everything down here is continent. So all of this is flowing into the sea and you can kind of see that from these, uh, these kind of striations in the ice um, and they're formed by uh, rock that's basically uh, causing the, the ice to ripple. So some important places to point out on the ice sheet is this point right here. This is the McDonald's ice rumples. So if I zoom in here, um, you can see this kind of waves that are, that are going back like water ripples. So this is formed by some outcropping rock underneath the ice and the ice is getting caught on it. So um, you can see that it's kind of like forming these waves as the ice is compressed against it. And this is what's called a pinning point for the ice shelf. So this whole ice shelf wants to move towards the sea, but it's being pinned back by this bit right here. So um, keep that in mind. And I'm gonna point some more features. This crack here is called Halloween crack. This crack goes right up um, towards uh, the top of the ice shelf. And this crack down here is called Chasm 1. So Chasm 1 goes right up, the crack tip is around there, and it also does this. So it's a huge crack that's filled with sea ice. And there's a second crack here called Chasm 2, where that's um, pretty uh, dormant, hasn't, been, hasn't moved in a while. The Halley was moved from its old station, which was here, all the way up to its new station, which is there. So now it's on the continent side of the crack. So when this does break off, this whole area here is gonna just go into the sea and Halley will not be on it, hopefully. So obviously it's a very unstable place to be on an ice shelf um, and they need to make sure the ice shelf is safe to live on. So a number of GPS sites have been placed around the ice shelf in certain positions, 17 of them and the positions have been carefully chosen. This isn't the actual positions where they are, but um, it's good enough. So the positions have been carefully chosen by a glaciologist to be in the best positions to give us most information. It's over certain fault lines in certain places where the ice is prone to move. So you can tell if this station here, it wants to move upwards, and this one's going that way, you can tell there's tension in the ice along this axis. And what you can do is, predict um, certain ice movements using this knowledge. So each of these stations uh, pings information back to Halley via um, low frequency radio waves. And they get data points a couple times a day and it's all concatenated into one in one file and that's sent back to Cambridge for the scientists to analyze and to make sure that the station is safe to be on. My job as an engineer was to go and service these sites. So each of these sites gets buried under about two meters to three meters of snow a year. So you'd have to go to the site, dig them out, you'd have to check the batteries are still functional, check the solar panels and wind turbines to power them are still functional, bring them all to the surface, repair any torn cables and um, realign the antennas to the station. And that's it, that's a site service. But what that meant is I got to, I was very lucky to go visit 
a lot of important places such as Chasm 1, um, the ice rumples and even got close to the hinge zone. So I think we got, you could see the hinge zone from, from one of the places we were. But um, in the future vlogs, I'll, I'm gonna be showing you what it was like to go to each of these places. The terrains differ massively. So at the old Halley 6A, it was very icy. Whereas up here, they get, you get loads of, um, they're called scoops, they're features in the snow that um, are basically just like sand dunes, but with snow. And the ice rumples we flew over, which was incredible. Um, you can really see how crevassed and how dangerous that place is, um, just because this uh, outcrop is tearing through the ice. Here's a nice graphic on um, on Twitter, which shows you, this is the crack tip from Chasm 1, and this is how it's spreading over two years. And this is um, where it's assumed the crack tip's gonna line up. So the ice here is about 300 meters thick. Um, so, or 250 meters thick, it, it's very thick ice, so I mean, you've got, there's some serious forces behind this crack propagation. Um, so this is the ice moving, and you can see here at the crack tip, it's kind of tearing through the ice, and you can see Halloween crack forming. So at the peak, Halloween crack was moving at over 100 meters a day. Um, it's slowed down a lot, and um, it's looking a bit more stable. This is a complete natural phenomenon. It's not due to climate change, or it's unknown if it's due to climate change, but this shows you what the carving patterns have been like. So 1915, the ice shelf was up here, and since it's been flowing out, and this is where the predicted crack is going to go in 2019, potentially. Um, this is, the cause of it is unknown. It is not definitely climate change. It looks to be a natural process of carving, but um, one thing I want to make sure that we're clear on is this is not 100% due to climate change or human activity. What you see here is Ollie digging the bottom of a Lifetime Mahali site. So Lifetime Mahali is the GPS network that is set up in Antarctica. And at the bottom of this hole are battery boxes that power the scientific site over winter. In the boxes are two lead acid batteries and each box weighs about 100 kilos. So you've got to dig right down to them, dig steps, and then we all got to pick up the boxes and carry them up the steps to the surface where we will then record their voltages, record their state of health, replace them if necessary, and then remove the site to the, the, to the surface. So feeding these battery boxes is a solar panel and a wind turbine. Most of the power comes from the solar panels, but when it gets dark in the winter, the battery levels can drop and then you get a strong blow coming through or a strong storm and then the you see a spike on the voltage because the, um, the they're, they're quite small wind turbines but they provide enough power and a strong wind to give it pretty significant charge so once or twice through the winter they have a quick boost um, just to keep them going until the sun comes out again at which point they fully charge because the sun provides more than enough power to run the station this here is the antenna which is pointed towards Halley. So this is the site that's at Halley and this needs digging out the ground, the cable needs freeing up, then the poles moved higher up and then it's re-set um, on the surface of the snow. Um, the pole is held up by three wires which are dug into the snow with snow anchors and as the year goes on they will slowly be buried and um, well, would require digging out next year. Well done for making it this far through the vlog. Um, there are many ways to pass the time down here, and one of them is to play music. We have formed a band called Bean Feast, and let us play you out. Here are some outtakes from our first band session.
Thank you.